Okay, so today in class we went over uh, doing um, titrations of weak acids with a strong base. And um, I just wanted to go over this one more time so that you guys could have everything in front of you over the weekend while you were studying. I think it's good to see the titration done maybe more than once in case you didn't get one thing in class and it kind of can make you a little confused. But if you have a video of it, it's a good way of sort of going back to review it. So we'll, we'll just start quickly by going over the titration curve itself um, and where what we'll be doing at each point in the curve. And then from there, we're just going to um, look at this lecture problem 16, which has all the major points. We're actually going to add one point at the very end, which is going to be 60 mils uh, or 35 mils or something, where we go into the excess side. So that should be how we're going to, that, that'll be how, what we're going to do for the video. So just to refresh everybody's memory, um, when you're looking at titration curves, for, uh, for, for example, for a weak acid uh, and a strong base. So um, in this case we're going to have volume of NaOH and we're going to have our pH and we're going to have our titration curve that looks like this. Uh, our equivalence point is going to be here and we know that that's going to be above a pH of 7. So in this case our equivalence point is at a, above a pH of 7. So we have our equivalence point and like we talked about in class, uh, so the idea was there are some major points along the curve. So we have our point A, um, we have our buffer region, which goes from point A, this is B, um, and then we have point C, which is the equivalent point, and area D, which is the um, area past the equivalence point. So for point A, we had said that this is an ice problem. Um, and we're going to look at one of those uh, when we start doing the lecture problem. In essence, we just have HA plus H2O goes back and forth with H3O plus and A minus. So that's, uh, that's the, the way that we do the, the ice problem. And then essentially, this winds up just being the calculation of Ka is equal to X squared over your concentration of HA, which is what we've seen before. So that's at the very beginning where all you have is the weak base. You have added no, uh, I'm sorry, where all you have is the weak acid, you've added no base. Then in B, what we have is we're adding NaOH. So we have HA plus NaOH goes to A minus plus H2O. And, and really we can think of this as not, N, as not Na but as OH minus because Na breaks up completely and NaOH breaks up completely into OH minus. So, um, that's what we're going to be doing here and this is all going to be buffer problems because we're going to have some mixture of HA and A minus. Then at point C what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to also have HA plus OH minus goes to A minus plus H2O. What we're going to find is that because these two are the same uh, we're going to wind up with zero moles of this, zero moles of this, and all of our moles, whatever they were, so, and, you know, our, let's say, let's say for example, one mole, for example, of A minus. So this becomes a weak base problem. So this is a weak, uh, this is a, oops, I'm sorry. This is a weak base problem where it's A minus plus H2O is going to give HA plus OH minus. And we would do this with an ice table. So this becomes an ice problem. Uh, it's an ice problem. And again, we're just going to have KB is equal to X squared over the concentration of A minus. So that's going to be what we're going to want to do for there. And then uh, part D, um, I'll just write that up here. D is just excess NaOH. So in this case, uh, the concentration of OH minus is going to be whatever the constant is whatever the concentration of excess OH minus is. So we'll look at a problem like that as well in part D. So now let's go back to the lecture problem. So here's the lecture problem as it was shown. So um, the first thing that we have to realize is uh, as we talked about the one at the one half equivalence point, pH is going to equal pKa. So what this part is telling us is that the pH at one half of the volume required to reach the equivalence point is 4. Calculate the Ka for the acid. Well, in this case, if the pH at the one half equivalence point is equal to 4.00, that's going to tell us that this is also equal to pKa. And we can calculate Ka from this by taking 10 to the minus 4.00, and we're going to get Ka is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 4. 
So that's what we're going to get for Ka. So that's just one way of doing this. So when you're doing these problems, you should be looking for, if you ever get any information about the half equivalence point, um, or if you get some titration and you get to the half equivalence point, meaning your number of, of moles of the OH minus is one half the number of moles of the NaOH, that's going to be giving you information about Ka, and that's what we're going to be doing for that. So that's why I gave this part A, is just so that you could see that. Now, we're going to look at each one of these in turn. So we'll write each one of these out on a separate piece of paper. So for the first one, part of for B, we have zero mils. So going back to our understanding of a titration curve, what we have at part A is we've added no NaOH. So this is essentially just going to be an ice problem. Uh, the way to think about this is really what we have in our beaker is we have, according to the problem here, we have a solution of 50 mils, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 50.0 mils of a 0 0.10 molar uh, HA solution. Now, the reason why I write HA is just to simplify things because you don't have to necessarily worry about what this particular acid is. Um, but so we're going to sort of summarize that. But in this case, we're talking about this acid, uh, formic acid, which is the one that's written down here. So when I'm referring to HA, this is going to be the general expression for this. And you can do that on the exam and be just fine, as long as you make sure you use the right KA and all that stuff. So, um, oh, the only time that might not be the case is if we asked you to write the specific equation for this. Um, but if we don't ask you to write the equation, then you can just use the general A HA uh, equation. So what we have in the beaker right now is we haven't added any NaOH. So this is just an ice table problem. We, we basically are going back to one of our earlier lecture problems where we have 50 mils of a 0.1 molar HA solution. So uh, what we're going to do in this case is um, we're going to set up our uh, equation, HA plus H2O goes back and forth with H3O plus plus A minus. We know that because HA, the only thing that it can react with is the water. Uh, there's nothing else in here. So in this case, the only possible equation we can write is this one. And um, we're going to set up an ice table. So in this case, our ice table is going to be our 0 0.10 molar, uh, 0 molar, and 0 molar um, for, for those, just like we normally would. So we're going to lose a little bit of this when it forms equilibrium, and then we're going to gain, and we're going to gain. And it's going to be 0 0.10 molar minus x, x, and x. So that's our standard ice table setup. And then we just go straight into our Ka problem. So uh, Ka is going to equal the concentration of A minus times the concentration of H3O plus over the concentration of HA. Uh, we're going to start substituting in. So the Ka in this case we calculated from the first part. That's going to be 1.0 times 10 to the minus 4. Uh, is going to equal x, uh, x squared, x and x, and then over the concentration of HA, which is 0 0.10 molar minus x. Now we do our approximation in this case. If you do the approximation, we're going to take uh, 1 point, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to take 0 0.10 molar divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 4, which in this case is going to equal, it should be about 1,000, or not about 1,000, it should be exactly 1,000, 0.1 divided by... 1 times 10 to the minus 4. This is going to equal 1,000. Is this greater than 100? Yes. So what we can do, this tells us that we can eliminate the x. So in essence, we're going to get rid of this, the x. Uh, so that is going to leave us with 1.0 times 10 to the minus 4 is going to equal x squared over 0 0.1 molar. And if you calculate x, the correct root for this case is going to be, um, let me just get my sheet open here. The correct root in this case is going to be 0 0.00316 molar. That's what you get when you solve for x. And then um, to just, so this is going, so x in this case is going to equal our concentration of H3O plus which is going to equal our 0 0.00316 molar. Um, and then we can calculate the pH. And if you take the negative log of 0 0.00316 molar, you're going to get a pH equal to uh, 2.5 is what I got. Um, you're going to get a pH equal to 2.5. 
So all this was was uh, for point A, so this identifying that this was point A, all this is is just an ice table problem. So um, this is going back to the very early days of acids and bases. Now we're going to go on to the next problem, which is going to be um, our 15 mil case. Uh, so this was another one that we saw in class. So for the 15 mil case, we're going to be somewhere before the equivalence point. So just to kind of give you a sense of how I know that, right? So um, we have our initial case, we have our titration curve. Let's just sort of think about this quickly. Like, let's say that we wanted to know what, what is the volume at the equivalence point, right? So what if we wanted to know that right away? I mean, you don't, you don't have to do this to answer the question, but you could just to sort of get a feel, what would that volume be? Well, in this case, we have our concentration of the acid um, so our acid is going to be our uh, 50.0 mils of um, 0.1 molar uh, of the HA. Um, and when you do this out, this is going to be 0 0.050 uh, liters times 0 0.10 moles per liter. That's going to give us 0 0.005 moles of our HA. And then at the equivalence point, we know that the moles of HA have to equal the moles of OH minus. So if we wanted to figure out what volume at the equivalence point we had, we would have 0 0.005 moles of OH minus because that's how we get to the equivalence point times the concentration of what we're, uh, times the fact that we have 0 0.20 moles for every one liter. So this is going to give us a number of 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.2. That's going to, so at 0 0.025 liters. So at 25 mLs, we reach the equivalence point. Um, so just to kind of give you a sense, so now you know how to do this, um, what is the volume at the equivalence point? Well. You just set this up, and it's it's just a um, it's just a stoichiometry problem. So in this case, we can start to label our graph where we have zero mils here, and we have twenty five mLs here. So that tells us that if we're at fifteen mLs, we're going to be in the buffer region. Now you don't necessarily have to do this on the exam to answer the question. the The point of this was just to show you in general how to do it. It's a good thing to know how to do, but. Um, it's it's not necessary for this particular question. So we're going to kind of uh, put a line here, and then we're going to do the 15 mil problem. Um, so for 15 mils, what we're doing now is we're taking our HA, and we're adding OH minus to it. So a strong base is going to react with our acid, and that's going to give us our A minus plus H2O. And we automatically know that this is going to be a buffer because we're going to have a mixture of HA and A minus. So we figured out our number of moles of HA to begin with. So if we do our ice table, we're going to put that in. This is from the fact that we have 50 mils of a 0 0.1 molar solution. And now over here, we're going to have 15 mils of a 0 0.2 molar solution. So that's going to give us over here 0 0.003 moles of OH minus. And then, of course, to begin with, we always have 0 moles and 0 moles for those. Um, here, we'll zoom in just a bit so that you guys can see a little better. So uh, now what we're going to do is um, we're going to um, do our subtraction. So we're going to get rid of our limiting reagent, which is our uh, 0 0.003 moles and our 0 0.003 moles. We're going to add our 0 0.003 moles and add our 0 0.003 moles. And we're going to look to see what we have after everything is said and done. So after everything is said and done, we're going to get 0 0.002 moles of HA, 0 moles of OH minus, 0 0.003 moles of A minus, and 0 0.003 moles of H2O. We, we don't care about the H2O because that doesn't have anything to really do with the equilibrium. So now the major thing that's going to get, be the giveaway here is that we have A minus and HA present. This tells us we have a buffer. Um, we have the acid and the conjugate base together. When we have a buffer, we're going to automatically go to pH is equal to pKa 
plus the log of a minus over ha. This is our Henderson-Hasselbach equation. So with Henderson-Hasselbach, we can start to plug stuff in. So 4.00 was our pKa. Um, remember, the way that I'm getting that is going back up to here to start. So we still have, we have that information from a while ago. And then we're just going to put in our ratio. Uh, so A minus, we got 0 0.003 moles. And for HA, we got 0 0.002 moles. And that's going to be the log of that. And um, what we're going to... Oh, and the reason, so just to remind everybody, the reason why we can use moles is because the volumes are going to cancel out. So if you have moles per liter and moles per liter, the volumes will cancel out as long as the volume is the same. So we can just use moles here for this one. So when you calculate this, you get a pH equal to 4.18 is what I get. So this makes sense because in essence... Um, what we've done is we've started with a pH equal to about 2.5, which is our um, a pH of uh, 2.5, which is going to be our um, initial pH. We started to add some base, and now the pH is going to rise because it's becoming more basic. And of course, we have our pKa, which sets our buffer uh, region. And now, in this case, we see that we have slightly more base than we have acid, so our pH should be slightly above the pKa. So that, that all makes sense. So that's how you deal with a point that's in the buffer region. Um, and uh, it's, it's never a bad idea to sort of get an idea of where your equivalence point's going to be. But again, you don't have to do that. All right, so now let's look at the one that we didn't have a chance to do in class today. So the one that we didn't have a chance to do in class today was 25 mLs. Um, so 25 mLs is going to be a, a case where we're going to see what happens. Um, so with uh, 25 mLs, we're going to do as follows. Uh, we are going to, well actually we kind of sort of already know what's going to happen a little bit. Um, I kind of gave away the whole shebang here. So at 25 mLs, um, we reach the equivalence point. So already you know that this is an equivalence point problem. But anyway, um, that's why I kind of was sort of thinking about that for a second, because we already know that number. So let's look at the problem from the 25 mL perspective. So again, we're going to have our equation HA plus OH minus is going to give A minus plus, uh, A minus plus H2O. So in this case, we start again with our 0 0.005 moles. And now we've got to figure out our number of moles of OH minus. So at 0 0.025 liters times 0 0.2 moles per liter is going to give us 0 0.005 moles of OH minus. So that's going to go in there. So what we were talking about now is, so at the equivalence point, what we see happens is that the uh, HA and OH minus will completely react. These go away. And we wind up with zero moles of acid and zero moles of OH minus. And we're left with all of those moles. We're left with all of those moles being converted to A minus. 0 0.0050 moles of A minus. So in essence, we have a base. We just have a base. Um, just A minus, 100% A minus. And this is not surprising because the pH at the equivalence point is above 7. This means that it's basic. So let's go ahead and calculate the pH. Well, this boils down to a simple base problem. Um, here's how you do it. So in this case, the first thing we have to do is we have to get our concentration of A minus. So that's going to be our number of moles of A minus, 0 0.005 moles, divided by the volume. And the volume in this case is going to be um, the two things added together. So we have our, this is, so on the bottom, this is going to be the total volume down here. And this is going to be our 25 mLs plus our, um, what do we start with here? We started with 50 mLs. So our total volume on the bottom is going to be our 0 0.075 liters, which is 75 mils converted to liters. So this is going to give us uh, a concentration of 0 0.0667 molar 
um, if you do the math. So that would be 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.75, and you get 0 0.0667. And now let's think about our equation. So we have only A minus present in solution. So A minus, and the, the other thing that's around is water. So A minus plus H2O is going to give us HA plus OH minus. And we can say, well, okay, KB in this case is going to be equal to the concentration of, oops, is going to be equal to the concentration of HA times OH minus over the concentration of A minus. This is our weak base problem. Um, so we need to do a couple of things. First things first is probably we should do an ice table. Um, so we have our concentration of A minus, our concentration of HA, and our concentration of OH minus in our ice table. And in this case, our starting concentration is 0 0.0667 molar. We're going to have 0 molar and 0 molar. Now, this is a little, this is one point that's a bit, you have to kind of remember. After we do the titration, that's going to set up what we have in solution. So that's going to give us all A minus. And we can see from our, our ice table up here that we're st once we make that a minus we have zero molar of ha so that's why the initial condition for ha is zero molar so that's coming down from there now it, we're going to get minus x plus x and plus x so we get 0 0.0667 molar minus x x and x okay so the only other thing we need is kb we don't have kb we have ka Ka in this case is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 4 um, is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 4. To get Kb, we know that Kb times Ka is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th, 14. So to make that conversion, we're just going to take uh, our Ka, we're going to divide this by Ka to get Kb. So Kb is going to equal 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th divided by um, our 1.0 times 10 to the minus fourth, and KB is going to equal 1.0 times 10 to the minus 10, okay? So 1.0 times 10 to the minus 10 is the KB. So now we can plug in. So we have 1.0 times 10 to the minus 10 is going to equal X squared over 0 0.0667 molar minus X. We can always check our assumption is the concentration of A minus divided by the, con the KB greater than 100. And in this case, you will find yes. If you divide 0 0.0667 by 1 times 10 to the minus 10th, it's going to be much, much, much greater than 100. Um, so that's important to think about. Okay, so uh, when we so this approximation is going to allow us to eliminate that. So when you solve for this, this is going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 10 is equal to x squared over 0 0.0667 molar. And now the final step is to realize that this is the concentration of OH minus, right? So our concentration of OH minus is uh, going to be equal to our uh, our solution for x which in this case, I got 2.58 times 10 to the minus 6th molar. And that's just solving for x. And then so we can take the negative log of that, OH minus concentration, which is going to equal our POH, which is going to equal, um, in this case, I got 5.59. And remember, the question is asking for pH. So we're going to do 14 minus the POH is going to equal the pH. So pH is going to equal um, 8.41. So you, you remember, in this case, you're getting pOH. So if you get all the way to here, you're going to get a lot of points. But it, the last thing to get all the points is to make sure that you turn this pOH into a pH, because that's what the question is asking for in the very end. So that's the three parts of that problem. Now, one last thing I wanted to just show you guys while I had the video going was... What do, you, what do you do if you get more uh, volume? So let's say that we get something like, uh, let's do 30 mils or even something crazier. Maybe we'll do even 40 mils. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. Anything past the equivalence point by, you know, some 
decent amount, a few a few mils, is going to make a difference. So let's say let's do the forty mil case. So we'll do forty mils. Make our make our life easier. So again, we have H A plus O H minus is going to give A minus plus H two O. We have our zero point zero zero five moles to begin with. Now let's see what that forty mils is going to do for us. So we have uh, zero point zero four zero liters of the NaOH times the concentration, which is 0 0.20 moles per liter. This is going to give us uh, 0.040 uh, times 0.2. Uh, so this is going to give us 0 0.008 moles of NaO NaOH or OH minus. Oops, or, or OH minus. Okay, so let's plug that in, 0 0.008 moles here and then we have zero moles and zero moles. Um, so there's that. Okay, so now let's do our subtraction. So we're past the equivalence point now. So our limiting reagent is going to flip flop back to the acid. So we're going to subtract our 0 0.005 moles, our 0 0.005 moles, add our 0 0.005 moles, add our 0 0.005 moles. And we're going to be left with 0 0.003 moles and 0 0.005 moles of A minus. Now, uh, of OH minus. Now, one might be tempted to say, well, I have to figure this out. Um, I have to do some complex calculations because I have A minus and I have OH minus. So I'm going to have to do this long winded um, thing. One thing I want to point out, though, is for all weak acids, um, the A minus is only going to partially ionize, right? So in this case, KB, we said, was equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 10. We figured that out. That is so small that it's, it's going to be totally irrelevant. In essence, this is going to totally wash out um, whatever this is going to produce. So we can effectively, for all of our titration problems, ignore the A minus um, at this point, because it's such a weak, it's going to be such a weak acid that whatever excess OH minus, that's going to sort sort of wash it out. So to get the pH, all we have to do is say, well, okay, our concentration of OH minus at this point is going to equal our 0 0.003 moles, but we have to be careful now because we need the total volume again, in this case, uh, on the bottom. So this is going to be our initial 50 mils plus our 40 mils of NaOH is going to give us 0 0.090 liters. Um, so don't forget that. Okay, so uh, where we left off was um, there was a little technical glitch there. Uh, you have to take the total number of moles of OH minus that's in excess and divide it by the total volume, which is the, 40 mil, the 50 mils plus the 40 mils. Um, and this is going to give you your concentration of OH minus, which in this case is um, 0 0.003 divided by 0 0.09. This is going to give us 0 0.0333 moles molar. And then um, we can calculate the pOH, which is going to be equal to the negative log of the concentration of OH minus, 0 0.0333 molar. Um, which is going to equal 1.47, uh, I should say, um, if we round properly. So our pH is going to be, uh, pOH is going to be equal to 1.48. And just remember, typically we ask for the pH, so the pH is going to be equal to 14 minus 1.48, which is the pOH, which is going to be a 12.52. So that's all you have to do. That's all you, that's all you have to do to handle a problem where the, uh, the acid is in excess. Uh, I'm sorry, the base is in great excess of the uh, acid. So this pretty much takes you through all of the possible things that you would need to know for a titration curve. Um, the key thing is to remember that all of these are all of these problems are just problems that we've looked at in the past. Um, there's nothing new in the titration curves. It's just a repeat of um, what we've done before. Okay, good luck for the exam.